Yesterday, my 52 female boyfriend, 53 of 30 years, proposed to me after dinner. He just walked towards me holding a box and said to open it. It was a ring, and I'd pictured this moment a million different times, but never thought I'd be so apathetic. My boyfriend then said that he was retired now and wanted to kick back and enjoy life with me, and he would love to do it all with me as his wife. A nice speech and all, but from the five-year mark of our relationship onwards, I'd been making clear my deep desire to marry and was consistently dismissed, given empty promises and gaslit. We'd been through the gamut with therapy and one counsellor implied that me telling him we needed to go to therapy and getting his butt on the couch still meant nothing if his mind had been made up. I was in denial about the fact he was just giving me the false illusion of progress to stall. My boyfriend and I have four kids. The oldest three are adults while the youngest is a teen female. She was sleeping over elsewhere when this all went down. Our kids went to a private school filled with typical southern soccer parents. I had to endure PTA mom's jabs about me not sharing a last name with my kids. Preteen years were a nightmare because the other kids would taunt my kids by saying, your dad would rather sin and go to the bad place than marry your mom. My boyfriend's mom would tell him marriage would be selfish on my part, it was just a piece of paper. My boyfriend ended up rising in the ranks until he became an executive. I was a stay-at-home mom, so I felt like there was always a power imbalance, exasperated by the fact I could be tossed any time. I partly stayed because I wanted my kids to have the best life and because I felt lucky and proud to be partnered with such an intelligent, successful man, but I also loved him. These past few years, my boyfriend's career has taken a downturn. He will never be poor, but the company he was part of took a nosedive during 2020, and he made enemies out of associates and board members. He decided to step back from his role and take the generous severance agreed upon. Now he's living off his investments and wants to relax. I didn't like how his career ended and how he treated people, and I'd been deciding whether I wanted to leave and find someone else after our youngest turned 18. So the proposal was a shock because I hoped that he noticed I'd avoided conversations about the future as of late. He rattles on about downsizing our house so we can travel and also cutting back on our other expenses, but we're not married, so it's all his money and house anyway. He did notice my eye roll and was offended. He asked what was wrong and I said that suddenly, now that he was downsizing, I was good enough to marry. He got mad and said that now that he's downsizing and no longer an executive, I suddenly think our relationship is disrespectful and started implying I was a gold digger. I was so angry I walked out and said I might just go out looking for a respectable relationship because I don't know what respect is anymore. Am I the idiot for rolling my eyes at my boyfriend's proposal because it took 25 years of me begging? Wowza, what did he expect? What did you expect? And he called you a gold digger? You've been with him for a quarter of a century without ownership of anything and he called you a gold digger? Everyone's the idiot here. Him for not committing to you but having four kids with you and you for staying with him and having four kids with him. There was a reason that he refused to marry you while he was working and a reason that he's willing to now. I would get to the bottom of that before I agreed to anything with this man. I bet he wants someone to care for him when he's old and infirm or he has some debts. I feel like Opie is not in a common law state. That's why her boyfriend refused to marry her. It feels like this is something he should be aware of already. I get the vibes that he was always scared he'd take his money and house, but now that he's downsizing and doesn't even want a house, there won't be as much she could take. Now, most of her life has passed and she can't even claim to own a house. I agree, they aren't in a common law state, but I think she's done. She's not had her own career. Being an unmarried stay-at-home mom put her in serious financial jeopardy. She has no retirement or social security benefits of her own. It sounds like her name is not on the house documents and she's probably not listed on his retirement account either. She has no choice but to accept the marriage proposal, assuming that the boyfriend is still going to want to marry her. Otherwise, she's going to be homeless and working her entire life until the day she dies. I want to feel sorry for her, but she 100% played herself. This dude is trash, but she acted like the dumpster smelled like roses, so I hope that it all works out for her in the end. Lady, consult a divorce lawyer ASAP to find out where you currently stand and whether or not the 25 years you've invested in this relationship have entitled you to any assets or financial support. They can advise you on the best next steps. If you're serious about ending this relationship, ensure you go about it as best as possible. You might need to briefly marry him. Good luck. I own two homes. The one I live in is in a nice area and I plan on dying there. 
The second one was my mother's and it needed work, but it is a very nice home. I clarified that I would reward the kids if they helped me fix it. I have one daughter and two sons. I truly thought my sons would help, but they didn't even when I asked. On the other hand, my daughter went full force into fixing the home. At one point, I just gave her the keys and told her I trusted her. The whole thing helped us bond more than ever and she learned a ton of skills. She tossed herself into this project to distract her from her ex. It took about one year of work each weekend and the home is looking great. Initially, I was going to sell and give everyone who helped the money from the sale, but she's the only one who helped. I know she was looking for a house and this spot is almost perfect, close to work, in a good area and not far from her friends and family. I decided to give her the home. I called her and had all the paperwork. She was excited and happy. Now I'm getting crap from my two sons about giving her a home. I clarified that they didn't help, so why would they get anything from that house? They have both called me a jerk, that I'm a jerk for giving her a $700,000 home and that they got nothing at all. Edit, one son is married, one is single, my daughter was in the process of a divorce and no one has kids. Not the idiot. Buy your sons a copy of the Little Red Hen book. You were very clear. Whoever helps will be rewarded. Your sons didn't help, your daughter did, and it sounds like she put a ton of effort into it as well. As far as I would be concerned, she earned that home. Work hard, be rewarded, do nothing, get nothing. Your son should understand that now, so it's also a good parenting lesson. How much do you want to bet that OP's son saw that their sister was doing all the work and went, great, she's turned this undesirable task into her project, so all we have to do is sit back and wait for her to be done, and then mom will sell and we'll get money. Sorry boys, you snooze, you lose. You are the idiot. Rewarding your daughter for her effort is necessary, but giving her 700,000 worth of property is quite generous. Your sons might have other things going on that prevent them from investing that amount of time or energy into your house. And even if they deliberately chose not to be involved, rewarding your daughter a house might send a specific message to your other sons about who among the children you favor. This is not just a little allowance money, it's part of your inheritance. You send a strong message about your feelings towards your other children by denying this to them. My in-laws coaxed my brother into playing poker with them a few nights ago, but they forgot to tell him they're all notorious cheats. So obviously my brother lost the first game and then they goaded him so that he would continue playing. By the night's end, he owed my brother-in-law around £5,000, which isn't the type of money my brother can just easily hand over. When I saw my brother, he looked like he was on the verge of a panic attack. After I forced him to tell me what happened, I confronted my brother-in-law who thought the entire thing was just some harmless fun. I explained to him that my brother didn't just have five grand lying around, and since it was just some harmless fun, he should forget about it, but he wasn't willing to do that and insisted my brother owed him. He told me not to get involved and suggested my parents should pay if my brother couldn't afford to, even though he knows they can't afford to. I could see he wasn't going to drop it. So I told him to ask my husband for the money, but he didn't like that idea as he wanted my brother to pay him since a man should pay his debts. I told him he was being ridiculous since my brother is a broke 19-year-old and he was scamming a kid. I know my brother did technically gamble away five grand like a massive idiot, but I think expecting him to give the money is ridiculous when my brother-in-law knows he and the rest of his family were cheating. He still hasn't dropped it and is trying to get the money out of my brother. I'm half tempted to ask my husband to either speak to him or give him the money if speaking doesn't help because my brother is having a fit over this. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. First of all, involve your husband. It's his brother. Brother-in-law probably doesn't want to go to your husband because your husband would laugh in his face and then get mad. He's harassing his wife's family. At least that's what your husband should do whether he pays it or not. A real man doesn't let his wife's little brother get robbed. Scare them. Tell them that your parents will happily pay the money once they produce a gambling license and paperwork to show that your brother entered into a legitimate game where he is legally responsible for paying any losses. If they don't have one, then you will be happy to contact the police and get advice on the ramifications of harassing a vulnerable adult under 21. Where did you study law? Because you just made a bunch of crap up. If they were cheating, he didn't lose. He was cheated. Your brother is a damn idiot, but that's to be expected from a 19-year-old. Tell your brother-in-law that he can pound sand, he's not getting crap, and tell your younger brother not to gamble for anything more than the quarters in his pocket. So here's the lowdown. My, 28 female, fiancé, 27 male and I met during our sophomore year of college and started dating post-grad. 
We've been together for two years. My fiancé wasn't close with his family growing up at all. In the two years we've been dating, I've only met his parents three times. That doesn't bother me. Like I said, he has a lot of resentment due to his upbringing and just doesn't particularly like spending much time with them. Nothing terrible happened to him on their part, but outside of his basic needs being taken care of, there was little emotional support. My fiancé was given a terminal diagnosis a few months ago with a two-year life expectancy. Treatments are not an option, so we're just living life to the fullest. After he learned of his illness, he and his family have gotten a bit closer in that they see each other more often. His family, very, very wealthy, gifted us our honeymoon as our wedding gift. My husband and I chose a relaxing resort vacation and to go snorkeling together. One last bougie trip for our bucket list. But his parents also chose the honeymoon dates without asking us, so they decided to book the trip so that his birthday was during it. Then they said that they wanted to spend his last birthday with him, so they will also join us. They got their own suite at the resort and both of his siblings got rooms there too. Don't get me wrong, I'm really grateful they're gifting us this experience, but I'm annoyed they deliberately made it when they could conveniently join our honeymoon. I know he's sick and I know they want to spend time with him. My fiancé won't say anything to them because he doesn't want to have to fight with anyone during his final time here, which I understand. I think I just wish they could have booked a separate trip for the family to go on rather than during our honeymoon, a time that we could have spent together alone, which honestly we rarely get these days. Between hospital visits and seeing friends and checking off things he wants to experience, we're pretty busy. As I mentioned earlier, money is not an issue and could easily have been made into a separate trip, but they chose to make the trip during his birthday, so they had the excuse to join in. When they told us they were also coming on the trip, I said that was a little strange. Now they're mad at me for not understanding how important it is for them to spend my fiancé's birthday with him. The entire family thinks that I'm wrong for being upset about this. His parents have said I will barely see them, so I shouldn't be upset. But we're all staying at the same resort with rooms right next to each other. So am I the idiot for telling my in-laws it's weird that they're coming on my honeymoon with us? I'm sorry to hear about your partner's diagnosis. That said, if your partner's family is paying for the trip, you don't get to dictate the terms of the trip, as with any other gift. I get wanting an actual honeymoon trip, but again, it doesn't have to be this trip, so I wouldn't push that point. Hopefully, you can all give each other some grace in a really sad circumstance. Call it his birthday trip. Book a honeymoon somewhere else before or after this trip and pick something you can pay for yourselves. He's terminally ill. There's no guarantee of how much time he will have left, particularly how much time outside of a hospital he will have left. He could not have the physical ability and stamina for a real family-free honeymoon after this one. What does your fiancé want? If he wants them there, I'm sorry, OP, but the man who is dying gets the final say. No idiots here. This situation is not the typical honeymoon situation. I think it's understandable that you're annoyed, but it's also understandable that his family would want to make some great memories with him before they lose him. The worst thing that could happen would be for your husband to have to witness you and his family fight over him and how distressing that would be for him. Those aren't the kind of memories anybody wants to be making. I wish you and your fiancé the best. I, 24 male, got my own place last year. More recently, my stepsister, 24, moved in with me. It's been great having her here. We get along great, she pulls her own weight, and living alone can be pretty depressing sometimes, so that helps. I don't have any rules here for her since I want her to treat it like her house too. None of that my house, my rules crap a lot of people play. I hate it. Last weekend, she had a guy over. Our other sister, teen, video called us, we video call every night or two, and heard someone over and must have told our parents after the call because my mom mentioned us having guys over and how that's dangerous the last time I saw her. Now my mom, dad and brother, 22, are calling and texting, nagging me not to allow my stepsister to have guys over. I basically only texted back, get lost, she's an adult and can have who she wants over her own house. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. 24? I'm 24. If my parents tried telling me what to do in my house, I'd simply laugh. They can cry about it in their own house. It's controlling and overbearing and weird. Seems like there's a reason she lives with you. Given that context, I'm not even mad at the language you used. The irony here is that they probably wouldn't care if you had girls over, but your stepsister of the exact same age is to be protected and shielded from the very same behaviours. 
It's super archaic thinking and honestly it's nice that you went up to bat for her. I get that your family sounds close and all, but your siblings need to back off. There's no reason why everyone in the family should stick their nose in your stepsister's love life, especially if they wouldn't do it for other family members. I assume your parents can't handle the idea of stepsister dating or think it's a bad influence on your younger sister. Your little sis is a teen. She can't have boys over because her mommy and daddy won't let her. The only thing that I will add is not to blame your younger sister. Sure, it would have been better if she didn't say anything, but she's young and probably thought she was doing the right thing, even if it ended up with all this drama.